Oh, my God, a Fox Sports Lab, round five. Uh, the Chief, as always, we've got you in for the week. And let's go to the tips, Chief. We are all square. Mm. Hasn't been super impressive, but we're hanging in there. We are hanging slowly, but we've got a good one to kick us off Thursday night. So Melbourne, Brisbane. Mel- Melbourne go to Adelaide, back-to-back wins in Adelaide. That's it's almost a uh, 12-point play when you think about it. But Brisbane had their first win, uh, albeit against North Melbourne. I mean, I'm looking forward to this one because Melbourne have proven that offensively they can get it done against anyone. Yeah, it's, look, I, I've got a feeling there's a, a good Brisbane performance coming sooner or later, but how can you tip against Melbourne now that they're back at the MCG? They had a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of tough ones over in Adelaide, as you say, stayed there after the first game, got the job done. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of a, a letdown after such a big week, but Gee, you've got to expect them uh, to be a short price favourite, deservedly so in this one. Sometimes you get you can get sucked into the stats. I mean, the Demons are ranked 13th for defending ball movement and then 17th for forward half intercepts. Like, you're finding – how are they finding a way to win? I'm sort of bamboozled a little bit, but Bailey Fritch, let's uh, – the forwards love to fill their boots. He's kicked three-plus against the, the, the Lions the last five encounters, so he's flying at the moment. Yeah, and they don't have a natural matchup for him either. So he might get amongst them again if the weather's good. So I'm tipping the Melbourne as well. Yep. Um, let's get to the Doggies and Essendon. So last week, Liberatore 35, the Bond 35, still couldn't get it done. Like when your midfielders are you're having almost 150 through there and still not winning, where does it fall down? Well, bottom line is if they have the same numbers this week, they'll win and win comfortably because coming up against the Bombers. So... Uh, it's a big job for Essendon's midfield. Uh, I think the Bulldogs are going okay without setting the world on fire, but probably good enough to get the points in this one. Yeah, I agree too. So uh, Scotty's up against it this week. Only a matter of time before Jamari Eagle Hagen has a, a breakout game too, a big one. Yeah, and if you're going to get that sort of supply against Essendon, you've got to fill your boots like the yep. Brisbane did last week against North Melbourne. Um, Giants and the Saints. I did the Giants game. The, the tsunami is non-existent at uh, <laughs> Mount Barker. And Toby Green got into the goals. He kicked five, and Hogan is flying at the moment. So he had four as well. But the Saints took a slow start, Chief, against Richmond, but they got it done as well. But this one, hard to tip against a tsunami. Well, it is. At, uh, at Manuka Oval, you've got to back GWS. They just they look such a strong side all over the ground. I, I don't think they played particularly well, but they did what they needed to do against the Gold Coast Suns to get home. St Kilda are a little bit of an enigma. And, and you know they're going to upset some good sides under Ross, but I'm going to stick with the Giants at home in Canberra. Yeah, I'm with you as well on that one with the Giants. So just on that, though, they talk about the tsunami. So they're ranked 11th for points conceded from a turnover. So last few premiers haven't really had that DNA in there. So give me one thing on the Giants that's impressed you so far this year. Uh, for me, I, I think the forward line looks a lot better balanced because Jesse Hogan's doing what he does. Callum Brown jobs in and out. You've got the Toby Greens. You know, you've, you've got the smalls that pop in and out. But when Jesse Hogan's in that sort of form, uh, I just think it makes it easier on everybody else. And he comes up the ground. He's a great link. He's a great outlet lead when they're coming out of defence. He uses the ball well. I think he makes a big difference structurally to the Giants. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that too. So. Uh, Port and Frio, your Frio. Well, I'm not sure that they've had more controversy in the last two minutes in a game of footy, but oh. they should have remained undefeated, Chief, let's be honest. Mate, oh, seriously? Imagine how much Crow I would have been eating if they had have beaten Carlton last week. They, they, they looked really unlucky, Frio. And this is a genuine danger game for Port Adelaide. I mean, the, the go-to tipping. Is Port Adelaide at home, isn't it? You, you, you tend yep. to back them there. But if Freo are good enough to stifle their scoring the way they did to the Blues last week, uh, the, the Blues found it so hard to score. It was only the double goal in the last comments. I mean, otherwise they would have been kept to 60 points to go if they didn't get that double goal late in the game to actually win it. So I'm genuinely concerned. Yes, I'm tipping Port. I'm going with the, the percentages of tipping Port Adelaide at home. But yep. if Frio can find another performance like last week, I don't know what that's taken out of them. It'll be interesting to see. But if they if they back it up, well, this will be a tough one. It will. And they don't need many opportunities. I mean, the way they're moving the footy, they're 16th for inside 50s yep. you know, per match this season. I'll, I'll tell you what will be interesting to go. You've got 
Butters and Rosie, who are absolutely flying, and Horn Francis, who was great last week. So all of a sudden, if Horn Francis plays consistently, that's a great mm-hmm. midfield. But then you're up against the likes of Fife and Sarong and Brayshaw and Hayden Young, and they're going pretty well also. So this could be a great matchup in the middle. Oh, Connor Rosie last week, 3-36. and 36. That, was, yeah. that half of footy is the best I've ever seen on the planet. Like, he was, like, I, I couldn't, he was just levels above. Um, let's go through the other games, Chief. So, Carlton, still undefeated, take on the Crows. Carlton. Yeah, Carlton for me. Gold Coast and our Hawkers. Mm. <laughs> hey, Hawthorne gave the Pies one hell of a fright. I told you it could be a close game, and it was. Yeah. They nearly stole it. Um, but you've got to tip Gold Coast at home. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Uh, you should have gone with that with your big call to get within a couple of goals for Hawthorne. I should, I should have done the mark. Cats in North Melbourne, uh, Cats keep getting it done? Well, the Cats keep getting it done, and, and this is one of my big calls, is for the second week in a row, North will be kept under 50 points. <laughs> that's your big call. Well, that's one of them. I mean, they, they've scored 70, 80 points the first few weeks, but against Brisbane, they were no good last week, and a GMHBA, good night. Under yeah, good points. night. Yep, I'm with the Cats well, as well. A bigger, a bigger big call than that to come. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, final game is West Coast and Richmond. Well, Richmond were good last week. I mean, they really took up the Saints and could have stolen it, and West Coast were good. Sydney nearly did the impossible by losing to West Coast last week, but they did enough to get over the line. They go back home to Perth, West Coast, but I've got to tip Richmond. I, it just doesn't feel right tipping West Coast to win a game. Well, this is going to be a great oh, no. segment. Into my big call. Oh, no. Don't <laughs> tell me. Yes. I watched their game live last week. I was so impressed the way they defended Sydney and the way they played. Like, they were in the game for three and a half quarters and Sydney just had the edge. I'm tipping as my big call West Coast to win. Yes! How good! And Ooh. and there's more. Reed to get 25 plus. Harley he, Reed. He was phenomenal last week. Dicko, he is a star. And we're going to have so much fun watching this young bloke. I love how aggressive he is. He gets in the face of opposition players, pushes them around. I think he's a superstar. Yeah, and the beauty about the the vision bug is when you watch him, he comes in, there's two players going to tackle him. West Coast are exiting because they're going, he's just going to flog them off and get the ball out to me. So Dusty had that in his career and he's only got it in his first four games. Oh, don't put Dusty on him this early on. Hey, um... That's a reasonable a reasonable price you'd get, wouldn't it? West Coast into Harley Reid, 25 plus. I would have thought, and the traders are always tuning in. I thought that would be a big price. So let's stay tuned for better. What's your big call? My big call is I'm going back to GWS and St Kilda at Monica. Sam Taylor to keep Max King to one goal or less. One or zero goals. Zero or one. Wow. Yeah. He is a superstar, though. He's the, best, he's the best defender in the league to go. I love him. He's got great yeah. speed. He's tall. He spoils well. He intercept marks. He took an intercept mark last week from behind. Oh, it, no. was actually, it was actually against Ben King. Ben King looked like he was about to mark it, and then <laughs> all of a sudden Sam Taylor was in front marking it. It's fantastic. Now, yeah. he gets, now he gets to take on the brother. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> got a spoil and he pinches the mark. He's done that a few times. <laughs> Uh, Chief, uh, thanks for your wrap, round five. Looking forward to this one Thursday night and uh, you'll be in fine form on Fox Footy, no doubt. Oh, nothing. Oh, I'll tell you what, I won't turn up next week if you've tipped West Coast and they win. <laughs> you watch this. I'm going to just <laughs> put, I'm gonna put daylight between our tips with West Coast. <laughs> Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.